What's up guys, Kino Corner here. So, a few days ago, my friend invited me out to an advanced screening of the new Ryan Gosling film, The Fall Guy. Being the Gosling super fan that I am, I took him up on his offer and went with him on a bit of a bro date to see the movie. Because the movie isn't coming out for about a month or so, I'm guessing that almost nobody watching this video has seen the film. For that reason, I'll keep the review as spoiler free as possible and I'll just give my more general thoughts on the movie. Why me? You're a stuntman. Nobody's gonna notice you. That's your job. No offense. I mean, some take it. First and foremost, this movie is, it's fun. It's got a great energy and it sports a memorable comic performance by Gosling. I love Gosling when he plays as the stoic Chad, but I think that his comedic abilities have gone a little underappreciated throughout his career. He was great in Shane Black's comedy Neo Noir The Nice Guys, and he was arguably the best part of Greta Gerwig's latest film, Barbie. No, this is no longer Barbie's dream house. This shall henceforth be known as Ken's Mojo Dojo Casa House. The fact that he's able to play these Daylon or Eastwood inspired characters and then turn around and be one of the funniest mainstream actors, it really displays just how big his range is as an actor. Misty Mountains, the, the porno actress. The one that died. The young lady. The porno young lady. In this film, Gosling plays as Colt Seavers, a hotshot stuntman who doubles for the world's biggest action star, Tom Ryder, played by Aaron Taylor Johnson. Colt's on top of the world, living the dream and romancing the cute camera woman, who is played by Emily Blunt. That all comes to an end very quickly when he experiences a terrible accident on set, resulting in a broken back, broken ego, and a dead career. 18 months later, his previous flame, Jody, is now directing a big budget sci-fi film and Colt gets a call that he's needed on her set. He's back in business, and now he might have the chance to reignite the passion between him and Jody. But of course, all is not what it seems. Tom Ryder's gone missing and Gail, the producer, tasks Colt with tracking him down and bringing him back to set. The mission takes Colt down a rabbit hole of criminality and cover-ups, with his own life turning into a kind of 90s action film. Even outside of the film set within the film, it plays with movie tropes from villain monologues and action story structure to fake props that look real. The movie even has a pretty funny twist on Chekhov's gun. It plays with form in a very meta way, and so when watching it, I was reminded of movies like Last Action Hero and Tropic Thunder. I know who I am! I'm a dude playing a dude disguised as another dude! There are some other ways that it plays with form. In one scene that recalls one of the famous scenes from Truffaut's Day for Night, Jody answers a litany of questions from various department heads. In the shot, she talks about wanting to do the next shot in her movie as a one -er, but if you've been paying attention, you would have noticed that that shot in which she proposes a one -er is, in fact, a one -er. Leach also plays with the form when he has Jody brainstorm how to shoot the movie. As she pitches ideas, he incorporates those ideas onto the screen. It keeps the film feeling fresh and fun, and it rewards viewers who pay attention to things like camera movement and editing. For somebody like me who likes to watch BTS and B-roll of movie sets, a movie like this does kind of scratch an itch of mine. It shows how they turn some random location on the beach into an alien planet, and it highlights how everything looks so fake on set, but then it cuts to the cameras and shows how it just works on film. All of this just works. It's not, I'm not kidding. There are even shots of monitors on set, giving us a producer's eye view of the movie. I'd say that the film's willingness to show us how these films are made allows the audience to respect stuntmen more. They're the ones being set on fire, rolling the cars, getting punched, and taking falls. Now, this isn't so much of a spoiler, but in the credits, there's a whole montage of the stuntmen on the set of this movie, and it's actually really fun to watch. In this way, Leach highlights the artifice of film. When we watch Gosling take a fall or do some jump, we're hyper aware that it's not Gosling, but a Gosling stunt double, even when Gosling is playing as Aaron Taylor Johnson's stunt double. So we get cases where a stuntman is playing as Gosling, who is playing as Taylor Johnson. Adding to that, I was pleasantly surprised to see, unlike many other big budget action movies, that the editing isn't super choppy. Leech lets the stunts and big set pieces play out for us to watch and admire. It is a movie to honor stuntmen, you know. The stunts are usually really good, and the action feels kinetic, even if it doesn't feel super realistic. I'd say that the movie operates in an elevated reality where it's supposed to be halfway between real life and some over-the-top PG-13 action movie. 
The film that they're shooting is, I believe, a parody of Star Wars, Dune, and superhero films. It's like they try to make the film within the film as stupid as possible. It's obvious to us that the film is dumb, but the producers and the stars all act like this is the greatest film since Citizen Kane. It's making fun of how they believe their own bullshit. I will say that some CGI effects weren't super great and briefly took me out of the movie, but I found all those to be relatively minor. What I found to be the film's biggest weakness is its sometimes wonky pacing. It has great edge of your seat sequences that will have you engaged, but then sometimes it just gets bogged down in less exciting scenes. I think it's a problem that arises from the romance between Colt and Jody. Colt has to live a double life, one in which he's taken on a criminal organization and one in which he's trying to work on Jody's film and win back her love. It just sometimes feels like as the movie starts gaining momentum, it stops that momentum to focus on the other storyline. It sometimes works, but it sometimes doesn't. I'd say that it works better in the second half of the movie as those two storylines start to converge a bit. Otherwise, the script is pretty tight for what it is. It's got a lot of twists and turns, and it makes sure to set things up in the first act that pay off in the second and third acts. You might think that one visual gag or joke early on is simply just that, but you know, there is a joy to seeing that thing pay off an hour or so later. I know that people got mad when Scorsese said that superhero movies are like theme park rides, and I'm gonna make the same comparison for The Fall Guy, but I don't mean it in a bad way. It's like a roller coaster. You can pretty much see all the loops and drops and whatnot before taking the ride, but that doesn't necessarily diminish the fun. Since it's parodying action films, the story is fairly predictable, but it plays with that predictability in a way that's pretty entertaining. It's not a film that's supposed to have any kind of deeper meaning apart from, I don't know, maybe Love Conquers All or When You Fall Down, Get Back Up Again. It's not meant to change your life. But when I watch a film, I can't compare it to films that it's not trying to be. Sure, there's more philosophy in, say, a Kieślowski movie, but The Fall Guy isn't trying to be a Kieślowski movie. So I compare what the movie is against what it's trying to be. And when I do that, I think that it mostly succeeds. And that's coming from someone who is generally sick of a lot of these Hollywood films about Hollywood. I guess I just like this one because it portrays filmmaking as a total shit show filled with an equal mix of artists, hacks, idiots, and psychos. I was going to say that I'm glad that there is a fun summer blockbuster coming out that's not based on previous IP, but one of my subscribers did inform me that The Fall Guy was a TV show back in the day about a stuntman who moonlighted as a bounty hunter. Let me ask you, has your life taken some kind of peculiar turn since we worked together? Turn? Uh didn't mean to pry cold, it's none of my business. So I guess it's not completely original, but from the description of the show that I read, the new movie sounds like it is a bit different, with the main difference being that Colt isn't actively a bounty hunter. He's bounty hunting, but just to save Jody's movie, and he's a fish out of water the whole time. To wrap things up, even though the film sports a bunch of great action set pieces, I think that the most memorable part of the film is Gosling's performance. It's a good mix of verbal and physical comedy, feeling inspired by an eclectic mix of performers from Tom Cruise to Buster Keaton. His comedic timing is great, and the gags are played out with as much love as the stunts and fights. The Fall Guy might be a parody of PG-13 action movies, but it's obviously a parody made out of love for the genre. It's not cynical, it just wants you to have a good time. In fact, there's a minor conflict in the movie in which Jody has to decide whether to make the film within the film cynical or optimistic. And the movie lampoons producers who sell nihilism to their audiences and think that they're selling an ideology of resiliency. If this sounds like a good film to you, then I encourage you to go watch it. I think this is the kind of film that can be enjoyed with friends or your dad. The screwball romance that is the center of the film will ensure that it's not just a film for dudes. It might be a good date movie. Who knows? Your girlfriend might find it weird that you're eyeing Ryan Gosling more than she is, but hey, that just comes with the territory with these movies. But that's not to say that men don't like romance in movies. I mean, I know I was cheering for Colt to win back Jody's love. Kings want other kings to succeed. <laughs> really? Yeah. Holster that. Yeah, it's holstered. It's done. Forget. You, you never saw it. The audience I watched it with was laughing, clapping, and cheering the whole time. As I said, don't expect it to be some movie that will challenge your worldview or change your life. But if you're in the mood for a breezy action comedy, you might enjoy this one. I think that The Fall Guy might end up being one of this year's big dad movies. Now, for the big question. Is Ryan Gosling literally me in this movie? There are arguments to be made that he is always literally me. But I think the jury's still out on this one. 
All I know is that I love seeing him in films and he shines once again. And hey, this movie got Spielberg to compliment Gosling as he told him that he had really loved the film. Gosling, speaking about this interaction, said, As far as I'm concerned, it doesn't matter anymore what happens. Steven Spielberg liked it. That was an all-time moment for me. I'm really excited for people to see it. I think it's a really special movie. So hey, you know, if Spielberg liked it, then maybe you should give it a shot. But here is a warning. It is not to be confused with Free Guy. Man, that movie sucked so much. Though I will say that I saw someone say that The Fall Guy looks like a Ryan Reynolds movie that was jokingly proposed to Ryan Gosling. I mean, you know, I can see why one might think this, as the movie feels kind of like a Reynolds film, but the fact that the goose is here and not Reddit Man makes all the difference. Gosling grounds the movie in ways that Reynolds could never, and he's much easier to believe as a stuntman. I think that if Reynolds starred in this film, then it might not have worked. So let me know what you think of the movie down in the comments, and as always, I've been the Kino Corner, and I will see you all in the next video.